Hello friends, welcome to today's operating system class. From today we will start our second unit. In second unit, four chapters are included. First one is process concept, multi-threaded programming, process scheduling and inter-process communication. And here we will start the first chapter process concept. And in this class we will discuss something about the structure of process in memory, process state, process control block that is PCB and the threads. In the process concept, first let us discuss what is process. Okay, so process is nothing but program in execution. Okay, then the program is the passive entity, and when the program is executed, then it will become process and that is the active entity. Okay, first what we have to do? We have to load the pro program into memory. Okay, then the program will become process right see initially we have to load the program program is here that will be loaded into memory then from the memory the CPU can access CPU can execute this program then the program will become process ok we can load this program by two ways by double clicking the executable file that is the program Okay, this is one way by pressing double click then the program will be executed then that will become process or otherwise enter the name of executable file in the command line ok this is the second way so by two ways we can convert the program into process right ok here the system consists of collection of process any system which consists of collection of process that means a single program A single program may have more process, more process, okay, here the system consists of collection of process, the first one is operating system process, executing system code and the user process, executing user code, okay, so two types of process are, are there, first one is operating system process and second one is user process, okay, and all these process can execute concurrently with the CPU, ok, how? By switching between the process, the CPU will switch between the process, hence the utilization of CPU will get increased, right? And next let us see the structure of process in memory here, process is otherwise called as job or task. Okay, now this is the very simple structure, structure of process, which is stored in memory, okay, which memory, main memory, here, the first we are having the text section, this is nothing but the program code, the program code, okay, the program code is nothing but the text section, which is actually the program which is to be executed, and Next we are having the program counter, this is actually the processes register which will store the next program to be executed, that is the purpose of program counter, isn't it? And next we are having the stack, this stack is here which is used to, to store the temporary data, that is the intermediate result, intermediate results and the temporary data, see temporary data that is the results from function parameter, return address, local variables, etc. Extra, extra, everything will be stored in stack in this region, in this region. And next we are having data structure. See, this is data section which contains the global variables. Okay. And the process which includes heap also, this, this particular area here, the dynamically allocated memory which is required for the runtime. Uh, process runtime ok dynamically allocated memory will be here for executing the process ok so this is the structure of process in memory here we are having see first uh, the text and data which is global variable and the dynamically allocated memory and this is for the general CPU registers CPU registers 
and all the other data will be here miscellaneous data and finally we are having stack which is used to store the intermediate results and next let us see the states of process if the process is executing the cpu then the states will be continuously changed see here we are having five different state first one is new ready running waiting and terminated okay so this is the first state that is new state if the process is being created then it is in the new state okay once the process is created then that will admit to the ready queue then the process is in ready state that is ready to execute okay this is ready queue the process will be admitted in the ready queue then the state will be ready state see once it get uh, to execute that is the scheduler will dispatch this uh, process into cpu then the state will become running state okay that is executing the process process is being executed then that is in the running state okay if the execution during the execution if process requires any io or event then again it will goes to waiting state okay the process is waiting for some event to be occurred okay otherwise it may require some io that is input or output devices then that will become waiting state okay once the io event io or event completed then it again go back to ready state that is that will wait again in the ready queue okay and if there is any interrupt occurred during the execution if some other process may come to the cpu with highest priority with highest priority then interrupt occurred if interrupt occurred again the process will go back to ready state that is that will again wait in the ready queue okay and once the pro process executed si successfully then the process will be terminated that is in the terminate state that is exit from the cpu okay these are the five states of process while running the process in the cpu okay the first one is new state new state means process is being created once the process is created then it is new state and second one is ready state that is the process is waiting to assign the processes that is the cpu and third one is running state that is cpu is executing the process and fourth one is waiting state if the process is waiting for some event to occur or it may required io devices for completing it process right and the, the next one is terminated state here while running the process it may exit from the cpu in three ways first one is if interrupt occur then it again go back to ready state or if the event requires any io or event for wait then again it will go back to waiting state or if the process executed successfully then it will exit from the cpu then that, that will become the terminate state but the cpu will access to execute the process only from the ready state see only one incoming arrow is there here the circle represent the state and the arrow represent the action arrow represent the action right so these are the five states of process that is in execution right and next uh, let us see the very important process control block which is otherwise called as pcb each process is represented by the process control block okay which is otherwise called as task control block that is tcb okay both are same only okay and pcb contains the process state program counter cpu registers cpu scheduling information memory management information accounting information and io status information and this is the very simple diagram for pcb okay here we are having process state process number program counter and cpu registers 
memory limit and list of open file etc everything will be maintained by the process control block the first one is process state just now we have seen that the process may be changed in any of the five states that is new ready running waiting or terminate state okay and second one is program counter this is one of the register in cpu which is used to indicate address of next instruction to be executed okay this is program counter and next one is cpu registers here uh, we are having uh, so many different uh, registers which are available in cpu i think there are 12 registers cpu registers for various purposes okay so they may be vary in number and type depending on the computer architecture right so these are some of the registers which are used in the cpu the next one is cpu scheduling information this information includes the process priority pointers to scheduling queues and any other scheduling parameters because once the process is created then that will be waiting in the ready queue isn't it then there is a scheduler that will assign this process to the cpu for execution hence all the scheduling related informations will be stored in cpu scheduling information and next one is memory management information for executing a process we required some memory and all the related information will be stored here that is the value of base register and limit register and then the page table of memory and segment table and all the details will be available in memory management information and next one is accounting information which includes the amount of cpu time utilized by the process and the time limits account numbers and job or process number everything will be available in the accounting information for every process it is having its own unique number okay and the last one is io status information which includes the list of io devices allocated for executing this process and list of open files because this is also as a source to execute that process okay all these things will be available in io status information and next let us discuss these threads thread is nothing but a lightweight process okay a single process may have more number of threads right when a process running word processor program word document a user is going to type the word document then a single thread of instruction is being executed that is for every keystroke if we type any of the key in the keyboard then one thread is being executed here the user cannot simultaneously type the character and run the spell checker within the same process okay so typing the document for every keystroke one thread will be executed and for spell check that is simultaneously the spell check should also be executed and a process may have multiple threads here we are having two threads for every keystroke we are having a thread and spell check will uh, the another thread and execute more than one task at a time okay so a process is having multiple threads and everything will be executed parallelly right this feature is especially beneficial for multi core systems means the multiple threads will be running parallelly and the system supports thread and all those information will be included in pcb then only we can maintain the threads also up to this we have seen the introduction of process concept from second unit and here we discussed the structure of process in memory process state process control block and threads and students please try to list any five important component in this pcb that is process control block and you have write your answer in the comment box thank you we will meet in the next class